A quick question and a quick answer on three modern English Bible translations. A viewer writes, hi, Brother Mark. So I have spent this year going down the rabbit hole of modern English Bibles. Welcome, it's a great warren to live in. A world I thought I'd never visit, but I'm glad I stretched out. Your videos have been a huge help. Thanks a lot for that. I still cling to the King James Version, but like a kid in the shallow end of a pool trying to tiptoe into the deep end. It's exciting and fun, but then I scurry back to the shallows. I've been into the CSB, MEV, and NLT. That's the Christian Standard Bible, Modern English Version, and New Living Translation, mostly, and I do enjoy reading them, but they all come with their critiques. What would you say are the reasons to read each, and what are some possible errors or mistakes to be aware of? I wrote back, brother, can you read Hebrew or Greek? I have a reason for asking. He replied, no, sir, I cannot. I then gave the substance of my answer. So here's why I ask whether you can read the original languages, and maybe this will be helpful to you and even someone else. It is not a sin to be unable to read Hebrew or Greek, right? I'm presuming that you were not given any realistic opportunity to learn these languages, just like 99.9% .9 of Christians worldwide. So like almost all the rest of the church around the world, you have to trust someone to translate the Bible for you. Now, I'm almost as much of a stranger to you as the translators of the CSB, MEV, and New Living Translation are. Why should you trust me? And why should your trust in me extend to them, just because I say it should? If I get into an argument with a knowledgeable King James onlyist, and they certainly do exist, over the proper translation of a given Hebrew or Greek word or verse, at some point you will not truly be able to follow our arguments. Not because you're unintelligent, but because those arguments are going to be about a language that you haven't studied. Your path to trust cannot go directly through discussion of Hebrew or Greek. So here's what I suggest. Read some articles or a book or listen to a sermon from Tom Schreiner, a leader at the Christian Standard Bible, and Don Carson, a translator for the New Living Translation in Acts. I'm not as familiar with the modern English version translators, though I did edit work on the Old Testament by one of them, one of the Old Testament editors, for a recent commentary project for Lexham Press, and what he did was very good. Schreiner and Carson, though, are two of the biggest names in conservative American evangelicalism. They have written tons of excellent stuff. I especially love Carson. Literally yesterday, I was listening to a fantastic podcast interview with Carson. I don't agree with 100% of what he says, but if that's your standard, you'll have no one to trust. Build trust in the modern versions both by reading them and seeing how they help you understand and reading and listening to what some of the people who made them say in books and sermons and articles. I think this is the path to trust. Now, you viewers out there, if you get a question like this, I suggest you answer it the same way. Build a bridge of trust, starting with some bedrock that you and your skeptical or fearful Christian friend share, namely, the desire to understand God's word. Then, take away some of the mystery of modern Bible translations by introducing your friend to some of the godly, knowledgeable figures that have given these translations to us. This path to trust is way better than getting lost in the weeds of textual criticism, weeds that may possibly grow over both of your heads.